Hello and welcome back to CS615 System Administration. In week 2 we already did a few practical exercises relating to file systems, so let's continue to try to put into action what we talk about in class. In this video we'll resize an existing file system non-destructively using NetBSD again as our reference platform. Don't worry, we'll show how to do the same thing using Linux in a separate video, but as usual I want you to become comfortable with different types of operating systems. We've already seen how to increase the amount of available disk space by adding disks to a ZFS storage pool when we discussed storage virtualization, but can we do the same thing on a system that doesn't use ZFS? When we did our exercise to run out of disk space in inodes, we noted that certain aspects of a file system, such as the total number of inodes, are fixed at file system creation time, and in our week 3 videos we saw how the traditional Unix file system manages its resources. Knowing all that, would it be possible to grow a file system, provided we have space available on the disk? How about the other way around? Can we shrink a file system to allow us to repartition a larger, mostly unused drive? So here's what we'll do to give this a try. We'll spin up a NetBSD instance, create a new volume and attach it to the instance, then we'll partition that disk such that we have two 512 megabyte partitions. We create a file system on them and mount them and create a file or two on the file system so that we can verify that the operations we are performing are non-destructive. Then we'll take the first partition and grow it back to 1 GB and verify that we can still access the file on it. After that we shrink the partition down to 256 MB and see what the outcome is. Sound good? Let's go! Ok, let's create a new volume and start a new NetBSD instance. We can then immediately attach the volume to the instance without having to wait for the instance to be up and running. Remember, we are making use of the various AWS aliases we had defined earlier, so make sure to source that file in our shell. Once the instance has booted up, we can SSH to it and take a look at the Resize FFS manual page. Resizing a file system requires you to consider the disk space you have as well as how your partition table aligns with your desired sizes. So let's take a look at our disks. DFH shows us the default disks and file systems, with the root here being shown to reside on the LD4 disk. So we can look for the second disk we attach to the instance via D message. There we go, it's called LD5. Running disk label will tell us what the current partition table looks like. Let's interactively edit it to create the two 512 megabyte partitions we were looking for. In interactive mode, we get a simple menu where we can display the current partition table, which shows us a single 1 gigabyte partition. Let's redefine partition A. We accept the default file system type, start at the beginning of the disk, then specify the desired size. Next, we create the second partition partition B. We want that partition to also use the standard Unix file system and to begin right after partition A and extend to the end of the disk. Alright, we can write the label to the disk. It now looks like this. Next, we create a new file system on each partition using the newfs command. Partition A and Partition B. And mount both partitions, partition LD5A under slash mount and partition LD5B under slash mount 2. Here's the amount of disk space available on our disks, just as we expected. Let's also create a file on the first partition.
There we go. Now we want to resize the partition. For that, we first have to unmount the file system in question. Since we want to grow the file system, we first have to tell the system how much disk space there is available. So we need to first edit the partition table again and delete partition LD5B and adjust partition A to spend the entire disk. There. Now we can run resize FFS and specify the raw disk device def RLD5A which will expand the file system. Let's mount it. We can verify the size, which looks about right. And the file we had created remains in place, showing that the operation did not destroy and recreate the file system. What about our second partition, LD5B? Nope, that won't work. That partition doesn't exist anymore. We only have one partition at this point. Okay, so far so good. We've seen that we can grow a file system, provided we have the space. Now let's try to shrink the one gigabyte file system. For that, we again have to unmount it. This time, let's create a 256 megabyte partition. How much is that in sectors? 5 to 4, 288. Now note that when we want to shrink a file system, we will run resize FFS first, specifying the new size. After that, we adjust the disk label to match. There, partition A is now 5 to 4, 288 sectors in size. And we create a second partition, spanning the rest of the disk. Now we can mount our first partition again and see that we have successfully shrunk it. And our file remained in place. Hooray! Trying to mount the second partition now will fail again. But this time this is simply because that partition doesn't have a file system on it. So we first have to create one. There we go. And there we have our two partitions adjusted in size as we had planned. Okay, that wasn't so difficult after all, now was it? Let's recap. We've seen that in order to grow a file system, we first have to adjust the partition table so that there is space for the file system to grow into. After that, we can resize FFS and let it figure out the size to grow to from the information in the disk label. Growing a file system will necessarily destroy any data that was previously on the part of the disk that we're growing into, so just be mindful of that. Now, if we want to shrink a file system, we have to reverse the order. We first use resize FFS to adjust the size, and then edit the disk label to have the partition table match. With a freed up space, we can then create another partition if we like, but if we want to use that partition, we of course do have to create a new file system on it. Meanwhile, the data on our original file system remains untouched. Well, that's it for this time. Next time, we'll do the same task on Linux. Make sure to tune in and subscribe to this channel. Until then, thanks for watching.